How's it going, everyone? Uh, first off, let me apologize. i uh, kind of been on hiatus here. Uh, apparently came down with uh, quite a case of pneumonia, so I've uh, been really under the weather and just trying to, to get along with everyday shit, but um, coming back at you guys this week with a pretty interesting article, I think. Um, it's going to be the the first look at... Um, assuming I'm going to try my best not to cough into the mic here. Um, uh, the best look we can get at three color and and why or why not multiple colors w uh, won't work in Popper. Um, we see a lot of the two color decks um, and we see a lot of mono color but we don't always see three color decks working out. Um, this is uh, an attempt at that. I, I kind of talk about lands and stuff and the reasons why we can't um, but I wanted to still put together a deck that um, had those those kind of pieces to it and worked with three colors. Uh, so this is what I came up with. I'm going to kind of showcase a couple more decks later on next week um, that kind of follow a, another casual three color principle, but um, I knew I wanted to start off um, using green. Uh, green is one of the best ways to kind of fix colors, but I didn't want just to waste spots on a spell that does simply land fetch. Um, so I brought in the land fetch on a creature body. Um, there's a couple ways that you can usually go about doing this. Uh, I'm going to basically divide those into uh, fetch that comes into play tapped and fetch that uh, goes to your hand. Um, so I wanted the body because it gives me something a little extra to work with other than just a fetch spell. Um, so, and you know, being so land heavy, I didn't want to end up, you know, when you run these heavy land decks, you run a lot of ramp, um, you end up with a lot of big mana. And this deck does not have. Um, big mana spells, and I didn't, I really didn't want big mana spells um, to make this work, so I had to find some way to get rid of this land once I had it. Um, you know, so first off, I, I knew that I wanted to um, work with Retrace. Now, I was kind of shooting for Jund colors to begin with, um, that brings me in Flame Jab, the one damage to creature or player Retrace, and, excuse me, Raven's Crime, uh, it's a discard with re Retrace. Um, both come in at a single cost um, and can work pretty well. So I, I wanted multiple copies of those just to make sure that I drew into at least one per game. Um, it's kind of very important to this deck. Um, now also, my my fetch is maybe a little short of what some may have expected from the start, but um, I wanted creatures that put land in my hand. Um, putting it on the field does not help me. Uh, that ends up with a whole bunch of land on the field that I can't do anything with. Um, I wanted it in my hand so that I can use this retrace ability. Um, and I wanted to kind of keep the mana cost low. So I'm running three copies of Sylvan Ranger. Uh, that's a 1-1 one, one for two that gives you land, and two copies of the Yavamaya Elder. Um, this is one recently, I, I don't know why I assumed for a while that it was banned, uh, because I never saw anyone running it, but um, I think it's really good. It's a 2-1 for three. Uh, you do run into the double green cost, um, but it does search for two lands and put them into your hand. Um, and you also have the ability to pay two and sacrifice it to draw a card. Um, that's a really great thing. It, you know, if you need the land fetch, you can set it off. You don't have to worry about um, when it dies. Excuse me, because I'm trying not to cough into the mic here. Um, so that was kind of the basis. Um, I wanted to keep down the double cost as much as possible. You see the elder here has the double green. Um, so as often as possible, I wanted to keep that down. Um, now I did want to bring in, you know, we're going with green. Green has some great creatures. Um, last time around, I talked about the power of Shroud in this format, and um, we've seen Blastoderm and the Jorel's Centaur, and they, they provide great bodies um, and, you know, very few flaws to them. Uh, one of the holdbacks to Blastoderm is this fading mechanic. Um, when the fading happens and it dies, that's it. So I kind of wanted to play around with that, and there are a couple ways you can kind of abuse that um, and reuse Blastoderm. Um, the first of which is going to be Horned Kabu, uh, which is a 3-4 for 2, comes into play. You have to return a red or green creature to owner's hand. Um, I say have to. Um, it has to be one you control as well. So when he comes in, you have to return something. If he's the only thing, he's going to return himself. Um, Excuse me, sorry, I said, try not to joke, I can't apologize enough. So, as Blastoderm's dying, you can use the Horned Kabu to bounce it back and replay it. 
um, since it's not targeted, it just says return a creature. Uh, the same thing happens with the shinobi here. Um, I did want a little extra hand control, you know, we're doing Raven's Crime already. Um, throwing in a shinobi is, is a great bonus, you know, it can help out with that. Um, and then it's the same kind of thing, it's an unblocked creature that it switches with, so Blastoderm is an open target for that. Um, you know, it has that ability to attack and return um, it to your hand to play the shinobi, and then you get to replay the Blastoderm when it lasts longer. Um, I also brought in, you know, some some elders. I had a great time with these. Uh, I thought they make a great main deck, especially for casual. Um, they work really well. Uh, brought in a couple, you know, kill spells to kind of round it out. Uh, four terminates, three echoing decay. Great if you come into storm, um, and a full set of lightning bolt. Um, so you know that works out really well. Now, when it comes to the land, I am running a bit heavier land package. I am running 25 lands. Um, that's because you want to be able to, to have something to discard um, to the retraceability. Um, I'm only running four of the Evolving Wilds and no other. There's no Ravnica lands, no Terramorphics. Um, the point behind this was to avoid that comes into play tapped thing as much as possible. Um, when I play a game, I usually shoot for two uh, forests, two mountains, two swamps, um, and I will keep no more than six lands on the field during the game. Um, something you might want to keep in mind, so, you know, anything you draw beyond that will be able to be discarded. Um, there will be an occasion I will drop an extra one, um, if I needed an extra mana for a terminate or something like that, um, then I can do that, but um, having all the, the mana available to you, if you only use six of the 25, that leaves you a lot of mana you can keep using to kind of pass around. Um, so I want to get to that six, I want to hold it that six, and I don't want to have to worry about um, waiting a turn to be able to make a play because something comes into play tapped. So there it is, this is it. Um, check out the article for more information. Um, anyone who's a frequent person who does this um, checks out my shit. Um, go uh, take a look, I've added a competitive section so I talk about um, what is going on with the current metagame and whatnot, so we're going to do that week to week. Um, but check it out. Like I said, not much of a voice, so I'm trying to keep the talking to a minimum. Um, hope you enjoy it, and uh, check it all out.